And so that's the aim of the SCALE consortium is to yeah. get through some of those narratives yeah. and messaging and barriers yeah. to um, you know, make it easier for enterprises to buy WordPress. This is Velocitize Talks and I'm Lauren Cox. Today I'm here with Mars Lunga Lunga Craig, CEO of XWP. Welcome, Mars. Hello. Great to be here. Thank you. So, Miles, just to start us off, I'd love um, you to tell me a little bit about XWP. Uh, XWP is a WordPress agency. Essentially, we call ourselves a mastery-based WordPress agency. Uh, we're mainly in the enterprise layer, so looking at enterprise storytellers mm -hmm. with complex needs as part of the WordPress ecosystem. Yeah, awesome. So, have you seen um, growth in um, an, an adoption within enterprise and in small business, or are you mainly focus you mainly focus on enterprise? We mainly focus on, on enterprise. So the WordPress ecosystem is so big, yeah. uh, caters for so many personas that um, uh, there's a lot of agencies looking after small to medium businesses. Uh, we focus on the enterprise market uh, because they're a different market. They're a different persona. They need to be addressed differently and they have different needs. So we are a community of people who have come together and uh, really looking to target the enterprise layer of WordPress. Yeah, awesome. So I've I've heard that you work with other digital agencies um, in the WordPress space too. So tell me about um, those that partnership and collaboration. Uh, started a little while ago, within the last year. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm new to running a WordPress agency. Before I was at XWP, I was at uh, an enterprise publisher here in Australia for over 20 years. And uh, so now I'm jumping in and I'm um, a CEO of a, one of the world's best enterprise WordPress agencies. Uh, I was going around, the WordPress community is very really good, very, very uh, welcoming and, um, and transparent. And I was talking to a lot of other CEOs and heads of agencies. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions I was asking is, what is the existential threats to enterprise WordPress and enterprise WordPress agencies? Yeah. Um, and uh, I really felt there was a need for collaboration and it has been done previously within the enterprise uh, WordPress ecosystem. Um, but actually, I was a bit surprised it wasn't happening quite that actively as I thought. So, with discussions with a few, and others were thinking of the same thing, yeah. and so with discussions with some key agencies, uh, we've started, started to have a conversation at various word camps and uh, and offline, yeah. and uh, we really came up with the concept of an alliance of uh, enterprise WordPress agencies to tackle the enterprise layer of WordPress. Yeah. Um, and it started off an alliance. And now it's coming, we we're calling it the Scale Consortium. Mm -hmm. um, it's ability for enterprise uh, WordPress agencies to scale WordPress. That is to scale the enterprises that we address. And we've got some fabulous logos across the enterprise WordPress uh, system yeah. uh, to scale our agencies, yeah. to scale WordPress itself, to deal better with the enterprise market. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of nuances to the word scale, which is kind of why we like, why we like it. Yeah. Uh, but it really is encouraging that the enterprise layer, especially with enterprise WordPress agencies and its key partners yeah. uh, like WP Engine, mm -hmm. can really start to collaborate to really address the enterprise market because there are existential threats to it. If we don't do anything, yeah. uh, I believe there will be existential threats to the enterprise layer of uh, WordPress, yeah. and that's not good for the whole enterprise, uh, for the whole WordPress ecosystem. Um, yeah. So there's a there's a uh, attraction that's happening, yeah. um, and uh, at mainly at the word camps. Um, so word camp um, Bangkok, Asia, and Bangkok, word print um, Europe and Athens, and now uh, at word camp US mm -hmm. and beyond. I think so. Hopefully, it's going to really be a consortium where we can uh, really have a really great position and narrative and uh, initiatives around enterprise WordPress and the personas that kind of. Uh, want to buy an enterprise WordPress. So, yeah. How do you see, like, what are the trends within enterprises and why they choose WordPress? I'm fairly of the belief that no one should ever get fired for buying WordPress, which is an enterprise narrative, right? Yeah. Because it ticks all the boxes. But the problem is for WordPress, we make it very hard for enterprises, well, not very hard, it's actually quite easy. Mm -hmm. We make it too hard for enterprise buyers to buy WordPress. And so that's the aim of the Scale Consortium is to yeah. get through some of those narratives yeah. and messaging and barriers yeah. to um, you know make it easier for enterprises to buy WordPress essentially, yeah. right? Because it should be, it's scalable, it's secure, it's extensible. You own your own data, yeah. you own your own platform. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you fall out of love at XWP, you can go to another agency yeah. and, uh, and pick up you know, the same kind of core WordPress and the same code base. Uh, you know, if you don't fall out of love with WP Engine, you go the same thing. And that's the beauty of it. That should be a selling point yeah. because some of the other closed systems, you don't have that choice 
as an enterprise buyer. Right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, the enterprise WordPress system is very robust, yeah. right? Um, it's got an aggressive roadmap because of the ecosystem that's driving it. Yeah. Uh, and all of these things, and it's cheaper, you know, pay, you know, license fees and things, you pay all the other stuff, yeah. just like you would with other CMSs, like hosting and people and things. Yeah. Um, and you have better hosting options and you have better people options because the, the ecosystem is, is so okay. large compared to some of the other C CMSs, either closed CMSs or some CMSs in distress, right? Yeah. Um, so it ticks a lot of boxes, but we don't make it easy for enterprise buyers to tick those boxes, right? So yeah. that's why the collaboration, I think, is very, very important. Yeah. So we see a lot of um, enterprise sites moving to WP Engine uh, hosting. Do you think that... Um, uh, do you do you do you understand why that might be? Sure. Oh, I th first of all, I think because your WP engine, you've got the WP, right? Your WordPress, right? Mm -hmm. So other hosts, uh, and there are a lot of good hosts out there. And WP engine is, is you know top tier, right? Um, but, but you specialise in, in WordPress, and I think it's very good. They resonate with that. Yeah. Uh, good customer service. You're global. Yeah. For us as well, we're a global company, right? We're all over the world. Yeah. Um, but you have a really great APAC presence as well. Yeah. So I think. You know, you're very market specific in terms of that. Uh, you've got a good U US operation we work with and an APEC operation. So yeah. I think um, you know, WP Engine is setting itself up well yeah. to be a, a you know, partner of choice for enterprise clients. So. Yeah. With the looming adpocalypse, how do you see agencies, hosts, et cetera, working together um, with their clients to help them? Well, the adpocalypse is uh, really around the first party cookie deprecation, mm -hmm. especially in the Chrome browser. Other browsers have done it already, right? And it is coming. What we're finding with enterprise partners, enterprise clients, spending, some of them are spending a lot of money to tackle this problem. And it's to do with ads, but also to do with marketing and uh, insights and analytics and things in terms of first-party cookies. Especially if you have a network of sites or a large um, portfolio that you're trying to take to market. Um, lot, some of them have spent a lot of money on that and quite successfully, but a lot of them have it. And a lot of them want to think about it. They don't know how to think about it. Uh, SWP have partnered with Google uh, to look at um, the Google solution to help with this, with this privacy sandbox. Yeah. Uh, and the main point at the moment around is education because I think uh, enterprises and agencies and hosting partners, they kind of realize it's coming. They're not quite sure the narrative of how to tackle it. They don't know the metrics around what the impact will be are a bit unclear. Yeah. Um, and it's very hard uh, for an enterprise client internally to justify expenditure in this area right because uh because it's not a they don't perceive it as around uh, revenue growth right but pretty much it is around revenue retention mm -hmm. and eventually the market will go to those enterprise clients and agencies and publishers who can deliver um good quality solutions in this privacy around this privacy um issues that the browsers are trying to enforce right mm -hmm. so it will lead to revenue growth impact if you don't tackle with it um, it is coming. Google have keep pushing out the deadline of when they will implement it, but they'll start implementing it as, as small percentages. And eventually, uh, if, you, if enterprise clients and agencies and hosting partners don't deal with it, they will feel the pain of that, right? Because an advertiser will rightly go to someone who has dealt with this issue yeah. because they will have better insights than someone who doesn't to the market and the advertising market and the analytics and marketing that for a client that hasn't dealt with it. Yeah. Um, and uh, so we did a session at uh, WordCamp Europe in Athens, yeah. uh, partnering with uh, Google to try and help the education of that. Yeah. We're working with some of our key clients to uh, implement what we're calling a privacy audit, yeah. which is understanding the impact of what that will happen to their websites when it comes, yeah. and then what, we, what can be done to fix that, right? And there's multiple things can be done, but that's part one of the problems. It's not an easy path. This is not the first time you've worked with Google, has is it? Because you worked with them on the Web Stories um, WordPress plugin. Yep. Is that right? Can you tell me a little bit about that and what and, and how storytelling can um, or can improve? Sure. Uh, yeah, so we've been very lucky to work with Google on a few things over the years. Uh, we're grateful for their partnership. Um, one of the key ones we worked on was a Web Stories plugin, which was really a Google initiative. Um, and I started working on that in my old career at a, at a major publisher. Yeah. Um, and then uh, with, it was Google, my old job, plus XWP was partnered in doing that. And it really is around, this is why we call, we call uh, XWP a mastery-based agency for enterprise storytellers. Mm. Companies just want to tell their story, right? And especially, you can be a media company and really want to tell it in an innovative way. Um, but it is around not only having an innovative interface to the client, yeah. 
Um, and you talk about things like, you know, the Instagram, Snapgram type, type interfaces and experiences, mm-hmm. bring that, that kind of innovative, innovative stuff into WordPress as a yeah. plugin, yeah. but also is around the internal workflow to do that. Because if you've got literally hundreds or thousands of editors doing something, you want a very efficient workflow. This is what XWP was able to do with Google into enterprise clients, yeah. have a very efficient workflow and then push that through all the way through to, uh, you know, the myriad of sites that use, um, you know, WordPress, right? Because yeah. essentially it was open source. We gave it, we gave it available to everybody, right? Every, every media publisher company was able to use this plugin. Yeah. Um, but it was around the whole end-to-end experience and enterprise storytellers just want to tell their story. They want to cut through uh, the ordinary sometimes. Yeah. Um, if you look at, the, you know, if you look at the old school newspaper guides, right? Yeah. The newspaper editor used to, sit down at the beginning of the day yeah. and have a blank canvas for their front page, yeah. right? And at the end of the day, they used to have be able to say, this is what my front page. And if you go to advertising, marketing, creatives, they'll be, they're used to be able to say, okay, I've got a blank canvas as well. This is how I want to uh, arrange my page. And they get innovative. Yeah. And this is what one of these things, uh, you know, the web stories was a plugin, was ability for them to get very innovative to be able to, you know, lay out the storytelling uh, innovation that day, yeah, right, yeah, uh, and some of the other you know technologies and things you'd have to get a developer in to do that kind of thing, right? Yeah. But with this plugin, plugins there, an editor, a creator can be very creative, right? So, so tell me um, how you think that websites can remain relevant. Okay, well, I don't, I, I, I definitely hear the narrative, right? I think that the web is around for a very long time, yes. right? Uh, and this is coming from an app guy. I love apps as well, right? Yeah. Um, but once again, you look at the end-to-end experience. It's not just about the, 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 the last mile of the client experience. It's the end-to-end experience. And I'll come back to the last mile. Yeah. But see, once again, if you've got a team of five or a team of 10, they've got to do create somewhere, right? And that's usually a web-based experience in the digital world. Um, and, uh, and so you think of that side of the WordPress as well. But then you think of the last mile, people talk about apps, people talk about APIs and headless and things. Um, and I think there is a view. For, there is a, a, a view of that, right? Yeah. Uh, certainly, that we've done a lot. Of, I've done it previously a lot, and done it. We've done it at XWP, yeah. in terms of the API. Um, but I think the web is around for a while. Uh, it's highly performance. It's highly secure. It's it's from an enterprise and even a small to medium um, business. It's uh, very well contained. You're not in the app ecosystem. There's detriments to that. Mm-hmm. Although there's benefits to that. And what you're finding, I think, as well, is some of the uh, and this is not really a you know uh, a space that XWP plays in. Um, you know, influencers are on you know they're on uh, Facebook and they're on um, Instagram and Snapchat, but they want a web presence as well, right? Yeah. And that may be for a store, yeah. right? It may be for a a, uh, a more innovative experience. It may be for a community things like that. Yeah. So I think uh, the beauty of the web is fragmented, and the web the website will just be one side of that fragment of the of yeah. wider internet so i love to finish an interview with a question what gets you motivated what gets you up in the morning ready for work um and keeps you innovating and keeps you happy at xwp well first of all as my answer top of you know my head is my family right because we're a fully remote company uh we're a global company global no one has an office right um so that to me provides a really nice work-life balance for me you know drop my youngest off i pick him up from school uh you know have meetings early in the morning sometimes late at night um, and uh, so it's a really, that to me is um, the benefit of uh, working at XWP. Yeah. XWP is a very thoughtful community as well, yeah. uh, very supportive, yeah. um, and we you know really trying to build this house that we want to live in, right? Um, so we attract really good people, and it's, you know, I talk about, um, you know, going to work, it's like ninjas in the dojo, right? We all want to be better kind of ninjas and things, yeah. um, and we feed off each other. Um, that's the mastery based access. Uh, aspect of this uh, of XWP, so that's that's encouraging for me and you know, exciting. Very challenging as a CEO because ninjas can be very challenging, right? <laughs> but uh, I don't want kind of people who just kind of yes sir, yes sir type of thing. It's I like I like to be sharpened, you know, yeah. and that certainly happens at XWP. Uh, that was Miles Lungalungu Craig from XWP. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.